Hey guys, Jason here, and it's uh, nighttime, if you can't tell. And uh, I do a lot of videos when I'm driving because it's when I do a lot of my thinking. But as you see, I, I try to be safe and pull off the side of the road so that I'm not videoing while I'm driving. But um, I just had something on my mind, and that's this. One of the things, one of the joys that I've gotten especially as I've gotten older. Um, I, I do a lot of mentoring, uh, mentoring to people through Skype, through, uh, through phone calls, um, and it's, it's, it's been a blessing of mine. And one of the reasons why I do it is because I know that I wouldn't be where I'm at today if it hadn't have been uh, for some guys that have really influenced my life today. Um, and there are a ton of people, and I'd, I'd be here all day long if I, if I mentioned every single one of them, but specifically um, in, in worship, it'd be guys like uh, uh, Danny Toombs and, and, uh, and Ron Alley um, that were big guys back early in my life. And you know, there, there have been tons of other, other guys, you know, Jamie Powell, um, that not necessarily from a worship aspect, but I mean, tons of guys that have mentored and influenced my life and then, you know, as I um, got more up in my years that have continued to, uh, to mentor and pour into my life. So I, I want to pour back into people's lives and, and I love being able to do it. Um, but sometimes you, you have to debrief and kind of de-stress yourself because you, you listen to things and you get a feel of the pulse of what's going on in the world today and you have to sit back and you go, what have we done? And here's where I'm processing tonight. And that's why I used to do a deal, if you remember back about, I don't know, maybe five, 10 years ago, I did a deal on, uh, back then we were called Got Worship. It wasn't called Wheelie Worship. Um, we called it Got Worship and it was called Dashboard Confessionals. And it was where I was doing a lot of commuting uh, back to my office on Music Row. So um, I did a lot of these things where I was doing just like this, talking on a dashboard cam. And so we set the video camera up, we did dashboard confessional. So this is just me kind of processing right now because I had a conversation with, um, with the church that I'm doing a little mentoring with. And this is a church that is moving more from traditional into, um, into more of a modern. Uh, but the church itself is still traditional. It's really traditional. Um, but everything about them from an exterior standpoint, it's turning more modern. You'd look at them from a website, you look at them from the graphics that they're putting out, um, everything about them screams, this is like uber modern. Uh, but if you were to go there based on what you see, you'd go and look and go, whoa, wait a minute. This is really, I'm, I mean, I'm talking pews, hymnals, um, everything else is really, really, really traditional, which isn't a bad thing that they're traditional. Um, it's it's a comment that was made by one of their congregation members or a couple of their congregation members. And it's this. The comment was made and, and, and with honest intentions, and I was told that I could share this, but as they were given a, a few resources where they could, you know, they don't, they obviously don't have the budget to have graphics personnel um, and people that they could do uh, some of these things. So they were, they were talking about some resources and, uh, you know, we gave some resources where they could get some graphics done uh, for free and with l very little experience needed. Um, and by the way, if you need some of that information, please feel free to hit me up. Um, um, we'd love to help you out with that information. You can get some of that information just by dropping us a line at info at weleadworship.com. Info at weleadworship.com. Uh, but anyway, so they started doing some of these graphics and stuff. And somebody made the comment to say, wow, we're starting to look like a real church. Now here's the problem. This church has been for lack of a better term, has been real stagnant for a while. Real stagnant that there's been no growth. There's been no growth because there's been um, 
no true discipleship. And again, the pastor that I'm working with has full blessing that I could speak about this because he knows where the problems lie. But I wonder if there are other churches today that we're missing the mark, that we're associating what looks like a church based on what looks like graphics, what looks like a website, what looks like uh, lighting, what looks like um, a worship set. And don't get me wrong, these things are important because we want to have the best things put forward for God. And if in today's society, a website, let me tell you, one of the first places that your people from the outside of the church are coming to look at is a website. Don't ever mistake that fact. If you hear anything, hear that. People that are looking at your church before they come to the door, I guarantee you they look at your web presence. But you want that web presence to match what your church looks like. So if it looks like you're some super uber modern church and they come to you and you look like that you're a church that's trapped in the 1940s and 1950s, they're not coming back. I can almost guarantee. Um, doesn't matter what you think you're like with your hospitality, they're not coming back. They've expected something else. But websites are so super important. So you want to invest in, in having good time commitment to making a great website. So don't think websites aren't important. But the problem is, is when our mentality is, this is what we need to have to grow. A website's what we need to have to grow. Lights are what we need to have to grow. Uh, better musicians are what we need to have to grow. Um, I insert almost anything into that sentence. This is what we need to have to grow. Because will you grow from those things? Quite possibly, it's possible that you do. Um, you can grow from building a brand new building. Uh, there will be growth from that. Studies have shown that you'll grow from having a brand new building because people will be curious and they'll go, what is this? What's going on with this new church? So people will come to see that. And then if nothing else is done, eventually those numbers will decline and trail off. That's historically true. It's been seen over and over. But what makes you really start looking like a church is what Jesus defines a church as. And nowhere does he define that as a website. Nowhere does he define that as having better musicians. What are we doing to feed his sheep? What are we doing to disciple? So can I suggest that before we ever look at websites, before we ever look at uh, enhancing worship music and everything else, which those things, again, they're great to do. But guys, we've got to be looking on our worship teams, um, on, our, on our teaching teams, everywhere across the board. If you're a first impressions person, um, if you're a Sunday school teacher, no matter where you're at, before you start looking at how can we better ourselves, answer the question, what are we doing to disciple others? What are we doing to disciple others? Because it doesn't matter what kind of side entry door you've got into your church. And by that, I mean, you know, if you've got a mom's group, if you've got a, a group for Christians, I've got a great, you know, motorcycle group for Christians. You know, those are side entry doors to the church. If you've got a great front door for the church, um, if you've got, you know, great welcoming teams and everything else, if you've got a you know, a great way that people are coming in by the droves to your church if they're just kind of funneling out because you're not doing anything for them while they're there. If you're not discipling them, then what are you doing as a church? That's what you need to be focusing on. All the great music in the world can't keep them there because if you're truly doing the job as a church, at some point we have to decide on what we're doing to disciple. Now, if that interests you at all if you think man something something's kind of ticking within me and i'm going i need to be doing something about this then please by all means again email me info at wheelieworship.com info at wheelieworship.com or email me personally jason at gotworship.net and i can i can personally give you some tools uh, a great book it's not mine i don't profit anything from it a great book that'll give you some great tools on how you can begin uh, discipling some people, starting out small in some groups that have, have some proven effects on how it can trickle down um, and start creating some great discipleship groups within your church. Even if it's within your worship team, your first impressions group, your Sunday school group, 
or if you're a lead pastor and you're thinking, God, how can I better disciple my church? There's a path for you on that. But let 2017 be the year that you start discipling instead of worrying about what physical, tangible, small thing can we do like a website or a graphic to make us look like a church. Don't just look like a church, be a church in 2017. Love you guys. Have a great, great day.